what's going on guys hope you all enjoyed your weekend i hope that none of you had any of the sunday scaries or whatever the follow-up to that is on monday i was actually just talking about this with a friend i like to look at monday as the opportunity to start something new i i know people sometimes hate mondays a lot of people don't like what they're doing or what their job is but you know it's the opportunity to start that new book that you've been putting off to the side or maybe pick up a new hobby go to the gym you know whatever it is this is the opportunity to start something new and with us here on the channel it's an opportunity to start a new win streak now we started off very hot with the picks here and as i've said before i've been doing pretty well for the series or for the season as a whole we did go three and oh on thursday we had us feeling on cloud nine and then we go oh and three on friday which is the first time i've i think i've had an O for this season um and yeah i mean it just didn't go well i will say a little bit unlucky with some things we had the Cavs, and then donovan mitchell was not on the injury report when we recorded the video he was he went on the injury report after we recorded i probably wouldn't have bet on them without him because the Cavs just down the stretch are absolutely awful we also had the jalen williams pra he gets into foul trouble very early on only plays 18 minutes he was on pace he, he his PRA was 30.5 he had 15 after like a quarter and a half and then again 18 minutes for the whole game so unlucky but hey this is sports betting and it's sports gambling you know it is a gamble you, you can't control the outcomes of everything or else there really wouldn't be any point in doing this and we probably wouldn't be able to because sports books wouldn't exist but i tell you what guys we're trying to get back on the horse today i've got a couple of picks that i do want to share with you all but before i do make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you never miss out when i post and get in the comment section let me know what you do think of these picks i've got two of them we only got four games in the nba today and i, I think i've I think I've I've made a pact with myself almost. I say I think because I've, I don't know. I'm going back and forth. I just don't want to give out player props on this channel for the time being. I've been really bad with props for most of the season. I like that Jalen Williams one, so I threw it in there, and that didn't hit. So from this point on, unless there are props that I'm, like, dead certain about, I think I'm just going to hold off. So we're just going to talk about two two games here. The first one being the Miami Heat plus seven against the Sacramento Kings. This was actually what I plus seven and a half when I sat down to do my research this morning. It's already moved to seven and six and a half at some sports books. So if you like this, get in there quickly because the line seems to be trending in that direction. Now, there are a lot of reasons that I like Miami. As a matter of fact, I think they have a very good chance to win this game. Not saying they will, but I think it's definitely in the realm of possibility. One of the first ones is they are far more rested than the uh, than the Kings are. The Kings played last night against the LA Clippers they won easily they won by 16 but again second night of a back-to-back -back, just played a tough opponent and whether or not they put up a huge fight physically it takes its mental toll because you have to be very locked in for an opponent like that and Miami sometimes can sneak up on you meanwhile the Heat they have not played since Friday I wish I could find the exact numbers I saw one of those big spreadsheets somebody posted on Twitter or X which I refuse to call it I will never call it X I'll always call it Twitter I saw a spreadsheet that was like Eric's Polstra after this amount of days of rest or when he has the rest advantage is the best coach in NBA history. Kind of like Andy Reid off a of bye week. That's the easiest way that you can think of it. So Spolstra and the Heat here got two full days. They haven't played since Friday against the Pelicans. Can't remember if I said that already. Something significant did happen in that Pelicans game. They won by 11, but Jimmy Butler got in a little bit of a scuffle on the court with Najee Marshall, I do believe it was. He's not going to be playing in this game because he is suspended as a result of that. However, Miami in 18 games without Butler this season went 11 and 7 so they've been relatively fine without him they've also been a very good team on the road they're 16 and 12 they are i believe just a hair outside the top 10 in road net rating and they have the second best road defensive rating they give up 110 points per 100 possessions way on them they when they are on the road that is the exact same pretty much as what the timberwolves give up for the season as a whole and we know how strong that timberwolves defense is so that just kind of puts it in perspective for you all right there looking at some of the trends of these teams sacramento is where are they they are 29 and 26 and one against the spread but only 10 and 13 against the spread as a home favorite miami meanwhile below 500 against the spread for the year but 11 and 7 as a road underdog if there is going to be a problem for miami it is without a doubt going to be their offense obviously butler isn't there that's going to hurt some of their 
scoring for lack of a better word but also their ability to get for to the free throw line what they're need going to need to do is pick it up from the three-point line they were a top two top three team for the early parts of the year they've fallen all the way down to 11th they're still not bad shooting about 37 and a half percent from beyond the arc but they're only at 35.7 percent over the last 15 games so that's something that you're going to need to pick up here tyler hero is someone to watch now he is questionable if he gets ruled out of this game, there's going to be live movement, and I would I would think a lot of you would kind of question this pick. I would probably still go with Miami if we can get this boosted to like plus nine and a half, something like that. But if Hero does play with Butler out of the lineup, you're going to need him to have a big night. He's averaging more than 20 per game for the year, averaging about 22 per game in 14 games without Jimmy in the lineup. So that's something to keep an eye on. And then Duncan Robinson. He's quietly become very, very important for this team. Um, he scored 17 against the Pelicans on Friday. He scored 15 plus in five straight games without Jimmy Butler, including 23 and 20 in his last two games, which were just before the All-Star break against the Bucks and the 76ers. So he's somebody to keep an eye on. The Canes, like I mentioned earlier, um, actually, did I say this? They're not an amazing home team. They are 16 and nine, but as far as their home net rating, it's it's actually not that impressive. Um, the way the way that they deal most of their damage is from the three point line. Now they don't necessarily do that with efficiency because they are only 12th in percentage, but they are fourth in makes per game. They get up a lot of those shots, and they're also very good when they're coming downhill. You know. They're not necessarily the all-in analytics sort of team where it's threes and layups, but they do a great job of collapsing the lane, driving to the bucket, and then kicking out to open shooters. So that's not all they do, but it is how they set up a lot of their offense. Sacramento, second in points per possession, involving a pick and roll when the roll man shoots the ball. Credit to that, most of the time goes to DeMontis Sabonis, but it also speaks to the playmaking ability of De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk as well. Um, if there is a weakness for this Kings team, well, I mean, there's a couple, but the most glaring one is they are 26th in home defensive efficiency. They're allowing 118 points per 100 possessions. Like I said earlier, Miami allowing 110 per 100 possessions when they are on the road. So you see a pretty significant advantage there. And another player um, to keep your eye on, I met, called out Hero and Robinson for the Heat. A player to keep your eye on for the for the Kings in this one is De'Aaron Fox. He's been very bad against Miami. Part of that, I think, could be because Miami is top five in points of the paint allowed. And although Fox has developed a jump shot, and especially that little midi turnaround, he still wants to be driving downhill. So if Miami can do a good job closing that lane off, I think you're going to see him struggle again. In 11 career matchups against the Heat, De'Aaron Fox has scored under his projected points total tonight, which is 23 and a half, nine times. So he is two and nine for overs at that line of 23 and a half. He also scored just 13 points on 25% shooting when these teams last met on January 31st in Miami. That was their only meeting this season. And even though you can't say Jimmy Butler is not going to be in the lineup, well, in my mind, all that tells me is that they're going to need to focus even more heavily on, okay, what little things can we do? Can we tighten the screws defensively since we are missing our star? I think that's what you're going to see happen. I think Fox could struggle in this one. The way I see it, this is a very 50-50 matchup. Um, like I said, would not be surprised to see Miami win this game. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Kings win this game either, but I just don't think they should be favored by this many points. So I really, really like the Heat, the heat at plus seven. Might go two units on it. Um, might not, but this is, this is my favorite pick of the two. The other pick that I am going to give you all, however is I'm going to take the Indiana Pacers at minus six. A lot of sports books have this priced at minus six and a half. I'm seeing it from minus six at Caesars at the time I'm recording this. Um, so do your line shopping as I always advocate for. The Indiana Pacers are, they're starting to look good again. I, I mean, you know, they, they were like, a, they were one of the stories of the league. They kind of faded out, out of the spotlight and Tyrese Halliburton was injured. So that was understandable. And then he had this minutes restriction and he was building back up, but he's starting to play some heavy minutes again. And you're starting to th see things come back to life for Indiana over the last 15 games, some of which Halliburton missed and some of which he had the minutes restriction. They are still sixth in offensive rating and they've continued their defense improvements. They're also 21st in defense during that time. 21st is not good. I'm not trying to say it like it is, but they were 30th or 29th for the majority of the season. So you're seeing them consistently show some improvement there. Meanwhile, the Raptors during that time, they are just not good. I mean, over the last 15 games, they're 27th in defense. 
defense, and I believe, yes, 24th in offense. Again, a really bad team that is not playing well. I know they took the Pacers to a two-point differential just before the All-Star break, but again, the minutes restriction and all that. Someone didn't play. I'm trying. I can't remember who it was. Someone didn't play for Indiana. I don't think. Um, but the point being, you know, it's I, I'm just not going to look at that as to say, okay, well, the Raptors can consistently be competitive against teams out there. They have not done a good job covering. I believe they are just one and three against the spread in their last four games. Um, they're actually above 500 on as a road underdog. But again, Indiana is starting to come back to life, and I think that this minus six really probably could be as high as like minus eight, minus nine. I just don't think the odds makers have really adjusted because they're trying to see if Indy is going to go on that run or not. But with as bad as the Raptors have been for the last couple of months, with some of these signs that you're starting to see from Indiana, also considering the fact that, you know, even though they're not a big team, they're not necessarily horrible rebounding, and Toronto really isn't that great of a rebounding team either. Um, in fact, I'm interested to see what the numbers look like during that same uh, recent 15 game stretch. Uh, so the Raptors over the last 15 games are 26th in rebound rate. The Pacers are 20th. So again, that should be a weakness for the Pacers, but the Raptors aren't going to be able to capitalize on it, or at least history says they won't. Um, you also got to keep in mind again, Pascal Siakam going against his former team. He looked good in that game that they played against the Raptors. So I think that you can see the Pacers walk out of this one with a win of at least six points. And guys, those are my two picks for the day. Like I said, short and sweet, uh, a pretty brief NBA schedule today. Only got four games, but these are the two that I like. Before you get on out of here, jump in the comment section. Let me know what you think of them. Like I said earlier, like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you all in the next one. Have a great day.